Hi, I'm Andy Powers, and in the world of pitching and icing your arm or not icing your arm, there's a lot of debate back and forth on if you should or if you shouldn't. Well, in this video today, I'm going to give you my reasons why you should not be icing your arm and how it's putting your career off and possibly even causing you more harm than good. And I'm going to share that with you in a little bit. See you in a second. Oh, to ice or not to ice? That is the question, isn't it? Now, full disclosure, I will tell you right away that as a former pitcher myself, when I was done throwing in games, that I would ice my arm. And when I was coaching in the uh, college level, at the high school level, I didn't force icing on any of my guys. But if they did it, I was very supportive of it. I didn't have an issue with it. Okay. But why do we ice? Why do you ice if you do? I don't know. I didn't. I, I did it as a pitcher because that's just kind of what I was always told that you do you know you see other guys doing it and it's apparently you know after you're done throwing that's what you do is you ice well the new research today is showing that ice may actually be more detrimental to you as a pitcher and part of your recovery process than if you don't ice okay and today we're going to go through that a little bit as to why all right, so you've just thrown in a game. Maybe you've thrown, I don't know, 40, 50, 60, 70 pitches, whatever it is. Every individual is going to be different. Some guys can throw a lot of pitches and, and, uh, and, and take that beating. Other guys don't throw that very much, and they still need a, a lot of uh, prep work after they're done. Okay, so what do we do? Well, I want to introduce you to two concepts mainly, you know, as to uh, the icing process all right but the one thing that i want you to understand is that most people ice because they feel like it prevents the soreness the next day and i know that i did that a lot but when i would still show up the next day i'd still be sore and i didn't understand well i thought it was supposed to prevent the soreness so that doesn't make sense well here's what i want you to understand there's a big fancy medical term called undifferentiated mesenchymal cells now there's not a test at the end here i don't expect you to remember that name but what i do want you to remember in the baseball world because you know we have a, a certain IQ level we're just going to try to refer to it as U, UMCs okay undifferentiated mesenchymal cells we're just going to refer to them as UMCs what I want you to understand about UMCs is that UMCs are very much like stem cells they're highly highly charged cells that go in for the regeneration process the difference between UMCs and a stem cell is that UMCs don't have a specific purpose to them like a stem cell does. So what happens? Well, when we're in the course of throwing a baseball game and delivering a pitch, we are creating small micro traumas and tears and fibers of the muscles, tendons and ligaments in our shoulder arm area. And that is totally normal. I don't want that to sound terrible. It's just like going in and lifting weights. When you go and lift a weight, you're you know, temporarily breaking down the muscles, tearing it a little bit, and then they build back up and they hopefully build back stronger. Well, what happens is, is when you go through that, the brain sends a signal to your body that says, hey, we've experienced some micro trauma in the shoulder. We need something to go there and fix it. So all these UMCs come rushing to the area and they show up and they're like, okay, I'm ready to go but they don't know what to do, all right? And then that's the key, and that's where I'm gonna introduce you to the second concept of this, which is what we call restorative functional movements, or we're just gonna call it restorative RMFs, okay? But restorative functional movements. And the point of a restorative, restorative functional movement is to basically start training those UMCs into, you're telling them right now exactly how you want them to regenerate and to repair the area that's experienced the trauma okay now if you paid attention a second ago to what I said that the UMCs come rushing into the area well how do they come rushing into the area how are UMCs delivered ah through blood flow and when you have ice on an area ice is actually a blood inhibitor it actually restricts and slows down the ability for blood to come through and pass well we don't want that we want these UMCs to come to the area all right, we need them to get there. So ice is actually deterring that from taking place. Now, a quick disclaimer, all right, side note. If there's an injury present, a real injury, not micro trauma type stuff that's normal wear and tear, but a real injury like you roll an ankle or something happens, and especially if there's swelling that occurs, 
ice is definitely a good thing there. We actually want to pre uh, prevent a lot of the blood flow from coming into that area. But other than that, if it's just normal wear and tear, and that's what we're talking about today, ice is actually a blood flow inhibitor. All right, so we need the blood flow, but how do we start regenerating the arm in the recovery process? Well, as soon as you're done throwing, as soon as you're done for the day, but before you've left the field, while your body's still you know, primed and ready to go, that's when you start doing things in the restorative functional movement area, okay? So, what are some examples of restorative functional movements? One would be like uh, the J-bands. Okay, the resistance tubing, doing doing your tubing stuff. All right. Another example would be actually making some light throwing movements. Okay, you're not you're not going to throw. I will tell you this: if you're doing any of these restorative functional movements and this is difficult or it's painful, you're doing it way too hard. You need to back off it. All right, all you're doing is just going through movements and just training those UMCs to be in the patterns that you want them to be. So a light throwing motion, not even throwing something, but just making the movement of a throw is a very good one to use. You can use, uh, you can hold your glove if you want a re little resistance, hold, hold your glove or a little baseball and just do a little bit of movement, okay? That's always a good thing too. Uh, some of the other things you can do, you can do uh, scat push-ups. All right, that's a, those are good ones. I've got a ton of these. You can go, if you have access to like a, a, a shoulder tube, wonderful tool, wrist weights, bell clubs, okay? There's a lot of things we use at the Texas Pitching Institute, all right? But we want to have a nice, thorough cool down. Remember that cool down doesn't mean easy. Cool down can be a little bit difficult, but the whole point is, is that you want to start the restorative process before you even leave that day from the field or practice or wherever it is uh, that you, you've been training, okay? But in order to do that, you've got to have UMCs delivered to the area so that they can start rebuilding. The only way you can do that is through blood flow. Ice keeps the blood from getting there, so no ice. All right. All right. Now, I hope that this is helpful to you. Make sure you subscribe to my page before you head out. Leave me any comments that you want or questions. I love hearing from you guys, and I hope this helps, and I'll see you down the road.